Just like last time I recorded um, for Plendity, uh, I also, before I recorded this, I recorded uh, an episode of A Look or Not, which is another series on my channel where I, a rookie makeup artist, I wouldn't even call myself a makeup artist, call myself a makeup lover, makeup fan, try to recreate MUA's looks. Um, and um, yeah, this was a... Uh, this was it um and I let my non-existent audience let me know if this is a look or not so you let me know is this a look or not I think this could be stage makeup for sure I have seen stage makeup like this before maybe I've even worn stage makeup like this before I don't think so actually but maybe one day I will who knows see me on the big theater one day Broadway let's go but anyways, let's focus. We're not going to talk about makeup. We're going to talk about movements right now. So I just need you to take me seriously with all this crap on my face. If that's hard for you to do, then cover your eyes and listen with your ears. All right, let's practice listening together. So I hope you've been well. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I hope, well, it's not New Year yet, but it's coming. It's coming. So I'm saying it now because I may upload this in the new year or whenever. So happy new year. I hope your Christmas was swell. I hope you got to spend time with your family. I hope you got to uh, relax, take some time off work or school, you know, break away from the restlessness of life and get some peace and quiet in your life and some joy as well. I know I sure did. I was begging for a break from just the craziness of life, work, and school, and dealing with my mental health, and hallelujah, I got it. These, I have two weeks off school to just recuperate. We all got two weeks off school for the holiday break, and uh, I go back January 4th, and I am hella nervous, to be honest with you. Why am I nervous? <laughs> because I get triggered so easily at school. I get triggered left and right at school. It is pretty ridiculous how easily I get triggered at school. And I don't, nobody knows how much I love to bake. Nobody knows. I say it a lot, but even then, you don't know how much I love to bake. Baking, just like recording these podcast episodes, are is like therapy for me um but unfortunately certain situations have happened at school that have caused me to be triggered and in my brain that my brain suddenly thinks after i've been triggered in this environment that this environment is unsafe for me and i can't be myself and i can't be happy and i can't be comfortable and i can't be at peace especially i can't be at peace i must be on high alert on defense mode uh at all times and who in hell can focus on learning and baking and improving their skills in in with such a mindset so I've been working very hard to stop thinking that way and to breathe and be mindful and um, you know rewire my brain. But when I tell you it is not an overnight thing, I've been at this for a while now and I feel no change. <laughs> And you know what? That's just the honest truth. Sometimes you work really hard to rewire your brain and help and heal yourself. And it, it seems as if nothing is happening. Nothing is changing for the better. It just seems like things are getting worse or nothing's changing at all. And honestly, all I have to say is 
change is happening. It's going to take you some time to uh, unlearn old behaviors and relearn new behaviors. A child doesn't learn to walk overnight. A child doesn't learn to use the toilet overnight. It takes constant practice. And then one day they just get it on their own. They just get up and they just walk and they just get up and they just go poo, you know, on their own. So you just got to think about it like that, you know, I need to stop saying, you know, you just got to think about it like that, that you are a child retraining your brain to be healthier and happier. And it is going to take time. And I keep having to remind myself over and over again, because I am human too. Even though I say all these things, these motivational, inspirational things, that doesn't mean that I am 100% A OK. I have my moments too. But I tell myself over and over again, hey, girl, it's going to take a while. And it sucks that it's going to take a while. It does suck. I am not taking away from the fact that it sucks. But you got to go through this hard part of rewiring in order to get to that healthier you. And once you are there at that healthier you, which may take no time or take quite some time, it's different for everyone. So don't think, well, because this person took this long, this person took this short amount of time, how I'm going to take this long. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get better. I don't know how long it's going to take for you to get better. We can't put a time on this. Nobody can tell us how long it's going to take. Um, so therefore, we just got to... One, one of the greatest pieces of advice I have ever been told, and I've been told this quite a few times lately in life, is to just enjoy the journey of life. And it is also one of the hardest things that I have been trying to do is to enjoy the journey. And you really don't have to do much, honestly. You just have to go with the flow. And yet it is so difficult to go with the flow, to just accept, not accept, but just be at peace with whatever life throws your way. To just say, hey, life is doing this to me right now but I'm just going to breathe and figure out a solution calmly and not freak out because what is freaking out going to do? It's just going to stall the solution process. It's going to stall you getting anywhere in life and fixing the problem. Um, so freaking out isn't helpful. I'm sure we all know this, but we still do it anyways. When will we learn? When will we learn? And you know what? Don't beat yourself up if you do freak out. It's okay to freak out. If you want to freak out, freak out. But pick yourself up and say, okay, that's enough freaking out. We got to find a solution now. Because freaking out forever is not the solution. That will get you nowhere but to anxiety land forever. So anyways, all that being said, I don't even know why I brought all that up. That was a whole rant. That has nothing to do with all these movements or maybe it does. I want to talk about the pros and cons of a couple of uh, big movements going on right now. Some uh, uh, lifestyle movements, I guess you can call them, mindful mind movements. I don't know, lifestyle movements. Let's call them lifestyle movements. Um, I wanted to talk about this because I, it bothers me. Some of these movements bother me um, in the sense, in different ways. Some of them are preaching certain things that are unrealistic and it is causing a lot of people, especially young people, to feel useless and uh, uh, unworthy and um, unappreciated. Uh, so I wanted to break down some of these movements and try to let you know that these movements may not be the healthiest all around, but there are also pros to these movements. I don't want to just talk about the cons. I will talk about the pros as well. These movements aren't completely negative or unhealthy, but they do have unhealthy 
aspects to them. So let's get started. One common aspect I have noticed in these movements is that the leaders behind these movements always say, they always start off with, so I have this big life crisis and I quit my job, I packed up my bags, I dropped everything and I moved to Tanzania. I dropped hundreds or thousands of dollars on a vacation. And on that vacation is where I learned all these things that I shall now tell you. But you don't have to spend all that money in order to understand the things that I am about to tell you. No, no, no. I have brought it all back to you in a cheap, straightforward version for you to understand without having to spend loads of money. You just need to purchase my book and my workbook and my CD and my DVD and all these other things. Um, Why is it that all these people are having, that are having all these crises drop everything? They're even capable of dropping everything. First of all, I ain't that privileged. Drop everything and uh, book a flight to cotton picking. Like I said, Tanzania, Africa. <sighs> Carpe diem, that's not even a place. I don't know why, but that came to my mind. They go to carpe diem, yes. <laughs> I can't think of places right now, but you know what I mean. And they spend all this money and they just do all these luxurious things. And they're like, but you don't have to do that. It's like, first of all, I don't even know why they bring that up. I don't know why they bring up the fact that they had to spend lots of money and do all these fancy luxurious things in order to get to this place. But then they're like, you don't have to do this. I don't know. I don't see the point of why they had to say that. Maybe they're just, they're like, I just explaining my journey to you. This is what I had to do. That's what I assume. I just don't even see the point of bringing that up because that has nothing to do with what you're going to tell us. Like that's, we don't have to spend all that money, like you said, and go all those places. So like, why do you have to, I don't know, maybe I'm making a big deal out of nothing, but it's not that I hate it or anything. I'm just like, why? <laughs> why did you have to do that? Like, why? <laughs> oh my gosh. And I hope these people realize how privileged they are to be able to do such a thing for heaven's sakes. I hope they realize that too. Uh, but that was the first thing I wanted to mention that I just found to be funny that they're always like, oh, I have to go here and there and spend all this money, but you don't have to do that. No, you can get healing like this in a cheaper fashion. And it's also a really nice thing that they're able to spend all that money and then come back to us, us broke people, <laughs> us middle-class, lower-class poverty people and uh, be like, here's a cheaper, straightforward way to get healing. So they're not so mean, you know, it's just funny. And at the end of the day, it's pretty nice that I don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get healing. But some another thing, the first movement that I wanted to talk about was the I deserve all good things movement. That is a fact that I do. We all deserve all good things. But I find that this movement, at least for myself, I found with this movement that I got into it. And I started thinking to myself, why am I experiencing such horrible stuff? Um, I'm depressed all the time, suicidal all the time, anxious every day. I deserve all good things. Why am I experiencing this? And then I start comparing myself to others who are experiencing, at least on the outside, from my perspective, what they're showing to the world. And I know that we've discussed this before, that it's safe to assume that everybody's got some shizzle nizzle going on. But people are on social media constantly just showing the good parts of themselves. And so people aren't able to see the stuff that's going on. So a lot of people just assume that, no, their life is perfect. And so I start comparing my life to other people's lives. And I actually have a couple of friends who have literally said to me that nothing bad has really happened to them, like nothing like big bad, you know, just like a couple little things here and there, but nothing like traumatic or anything like that. No, nothing to really hurt them or anything like that. Their lives have been perfectly fine all this time. And I'm like, 
what the hell? I hate you. <laughs> like I deserve all good things just like they do. So why do they get to experience all good things? And I am sitting here with three mental illnesses. <laughs> And so I just started hating my life even more than I already did. And I, it just made me really depressed thinking I deserve all good things. And yet this is all I'm experiencing is bad things. Like, um, so I believe that this movement may emphasis on may cause people to think, uh, may cause people to compare themselves to others. Um, and cause people to think I should never have to go through a bad thing. But here's the thing, in a sense, that's true, but we live in a world where people are crazy and people do really bad things on this earth. And unfortunately we have to live on the same planet as they do, which means that we will experience some crap. Um, so if you think you're gonna go through life without experiencing a single bad thing, without an inch of trauma, I believe that everyone has even just a little bit of trauma. Black people have so much trauma. Um, I can't speak for any other um, ethnicity, but for Black people, we have so much trauma for heaven's sakes. And as I said, I have a couple of friends who uh, they say they haven't experienced any bad thing or anything like that, but I believe that, and I feel like there's going to be people like that in the world, but there's also more people in the world that have experienced bad things than people who have not. I just feel that this movement um, may cause people to think like what I said, like compare yourself and think I should never go through a bad thing and then start to hate their life because I deserve good things yet no good thing is happening to me. Um, so that's 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 when that's that's the cons for that movement. But the pros for that movement is if you if you take that and change it into a different perspective, I deserve good things. You may take that and run with a different perspective where you're like, I deserve good things. So I'm going to work hard so that I can get good things. I'm going to work hard so I can earn enough money to take myself nice places and treat myself every now and then and take care of myself and those that I love and stuff like that and help others so that other people can experience good things as well. So you can look at it from different perspectives, but especially if you have depression um, and which causes you to have a lot of negative thinking and you get involved with this movement, you may start thinking the way I was thinking, but you may not. Everyone is different. The next movement that I wanted to talk about. Also, one more thing, it just makes it harder to deal with bad things. When bad things come your way, you're, you're already depressed because you hate your life. And then another bad thing happens. Could you imagine the state that your mind will be in when your mind is already in such a bad place? Like, could it get any worse? And then it actually gets worse. Like, oh my gosh, I've been there multiple times. The next movement is follow your heart, your passion, follow your dreams. All I have to say is following your heart isn't always the greatest idea. I was raised in a, a Christian family. I am not Christian anymore, but I have learned quite a bit from being raised in a Christian family. For one thing, you don't even have to be Christian to believe this. It is not good to live your life based on just emotions. Children do that. Children do that. Are you a child? Or are you an adult? Children are like, I want this. If I don't get it, I'm going to throw a temper tantrum. They live their lives based on emotion. Unfortunately, there are a lot of adults who live their lives based on their emotions, based on what their heart says and you know sometimes it's good to listen to your heart listen to your gut uh listen to your conscience what it's telling you to do it's good to do that yes yeah, sometimes but it's also great most of the time to like if not all of the time to think logically 
use the brain that the Lord gave you and think things through, you know, that doesn't sound so bad, does it? Doesn't sound so horrible. But if you're constantly just going with your emotions, I feel like I'm doing this and then I feel like doing that and feel like doing this. If you just want to be a freaking wave throughout your life, I'm just a free bird that just floats in the wind. If you want to live your life that way, go ahead. But, and it works for some people. But I'm telling you, I have tried to live my life just based on my emotions. And I have dropped out of university twice because of that. <laughs> I'm in university now for the third time. And I, my emotions are telling me to drop out because I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm having to deal with my mental health. And it's getting worse instead of better. But... I am choosing to listen to logic. I need a job, a stable job. There's not many jobs that I can get right now in, the, in this town that I'm living without some sort of certificate, degree, or diploma. I need a one of those things. So I need to stay in school to get one of those things so I can get a full-time stable job instead of working part-time jobs, job, jumping from job to job to job. I'm barely making ends meet by doing this. So instead of listening to my emotions, I am staying in school. Instead of listening to my emotions that want me to quit my job right now, I am staying at that job because hopping from job to job is not going to get me anywhere. Uh, it's, it's not helpful. It'll stress me out. It stresses me out applying for jobs, waiting for someone to contact me, uh, not knowing since I don't have a job um how I'm going to pay my next bill you know so it's best to listen to logic instead of always just listening to your heart and I this is a whole other conversation but I, I notice a lot of people when it comes to love love to say I'm in love with this person yeah we aren't um we're kind of toxic and, you know, we're not financially stable or blah, 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 but we're going to go try and find a place to live and we're going to raise a kid and we're going to get married. And we're going to do all these things. You think I'm being ridiculous, but do you know how many people in the world do this every day? It's very common. And these are all people who are listening to their heart because they're in love. They're in love. That's just another example. Listen to logic, not just your heart, not just because you're in love. That doesn't mean that you should go with that thing. Come on now, honey, come on. Another thing, you may wanna follow your passion, but is your passion gonna pay your bills? Unfortunately, we live in a world where we have bills to pay. I would love to go off the grid, make YouTube videos all the time and grow my own food. I hate having to buy uh, food at the grocery store, paying money for freaking fruits, how much money for fruits and vegetables when I could grow my own for heaven's sakes. And I'm not in an environment right now where I can do that because I live uh, in, a, in a, an apartment building. So I'm not able to even do that right now, even if I wanted to. <laughs> and so I would love to go do that. Uh, live on a farm for heaven's sakes, even who knows, uh, and just do my own off the grid lifestyle thing and not have to worry about bills so much. But um, that's not reality. Uh, so if your passion isn't going to pay the bills, there's nothing wrong with doing your passion still, but get a job and do your passion on the side. Heck, if you can make money from your passion on the side, then do a little side hustle. You can do that too. There's nothing wrong with that. But this whole follow your heart, follow your passion and listen to your emotions all the freaking time thing is a little outrageous and crazy and not logical. It's not going to help you pay your bills. You will end up homeless. If that's what you want, follow your heart. Also, passions can be expensive. And a lot of people are like, follow your passion, follow your passion. I have quite a few passions that cost money. Most of my passions cost money. I don't, I'm not made of money. I told you I only work once or twice a week. Um, so it's hard for me to follow my passions right now, but I'm trying to with YouTube. I am trying not 
I'm trying to figure out uh, logical, inexpensive ways to keep up my passion for YouTube, keep going with YouTube videos for my non-existent audience, which will one day be there. And um, it's working so far. Hallelujah. Because I got a brain. I'm figuring out how to do this, but I'm going to spend lots of money because there's so many YouTubers that buy these expensive cameras and have this whole studio set up and if you're made of money go ahead and do that but i don't i'm not able to set up my own studio we have my own office where i can create all my ideas for youtube and blah 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 hire employees to help me out with social media and stuff like that and filming and editing i do everything myself nobody is helping me but me okay <laughs> nobody is helping me but me so Sometimes passions are expensive. And when you're constantly hearing people and seeing people follow their passion, follow their passion, they're telling you follow your passion, you're going to feel like crap because it's like, well, I want to follow my passion too, but I ain't got the money to follow my flipping passion. I got to focus on school. I got to focus on work. So I don't want you to feel bad if you're not able to follow your passion, at least right now, but you have your whole life ahead of you. And hopefully you will be able to save up money enough to do whatever the heck you want to do with that money, whether it's following your passion, doing your passion on the side as a side hustle, starting your own business, whatever the case might be. Uh, I pray that comes your way in this new year or eventually, eventually. Last movement that I wanted to talk about is one day you'll leave a huge mark on the world. Can I be honest with you? You know, those movements that are like, you got to leave your mark. The world will know your name, blah, blah, blah. Listen, do you know how many people on this world have died without anybody knowing them? It's sad, but it's true. Do you know how many people have been living their lives doing amazing things and going unnoticed? How many uh, activists are there in the world not getting recognized for what they're doing um, how many people give money to charity and they don't release their name and nobody's applauding them for giving to charity, nothing like that. Even when I was broke, I've always been broke, but when I was even, <laughs> I've always been broke, but when I was broke, but I was able to even give $2 to charity, I still gave $2 to charity. Is anybody praising me for giving $2 to charity? No. No, nobody's saying, oh, good for you. She's so broke like the woman in the Bible story. You're so broke and yet she still gives a penny to the charity. Nobody's even applauding me for that. You know, only Jesus Christ is for heaven's sakes. He's the only one that knows. Now you know too. There's so many people who are doing so many amazing things who are going unnoticed. And there's also people who are doing things that are amazing, but the world doesn't see it as amazing. Like being a janitor. Everyone always gives janitors a bad rap and maids, cleaners, um, you know, these types of jobs, um, garbage people that pick up the garbage, throw it in the truck and keep on going to hang on to the side, you know, those garbage people, nobody applauds them for anything. If you do, good for you. Um, you're woke. But if you don't, don't feel bad, but just know that maybe you should change your definition of amazing because these, everybody who has a job is needed. For some reason, they are doing, they are adding, whether or not you have a job actually, you are adding something to this world, whether or not you believe it. And you could be adding something to yourself, your own personal life, adding joy to your own life, adding health to your own self, healing yourself, healing others, maybe your neighbor, you bring them joy, but they're not going around saying, let's get an award for this person, but you bring them joy, you bring your mom joy, you bring your brother joy, you bring your dad joy, you bring your grandma, grandpa joy, you know, you don't have to be famous. You don't have to be famous in order to leave a mark on the world. And heck, you can leave a mark on the world in your own little way. And the world may never recognize you for leaving that mark. But as long as you felt when you go on your deathbed that you did your part on this earth as much as you could with your busy life, 
with your trying to make ends meet life. I don't have time to do all this and that and this and that and this and that. I can't do everything that I would like to do to help the world out as much as I'd like. So you give to charity, you give to tie that church, um, you try and cook for the homeless, or you just try and feed your kids, or you try and feed yourself, keep yourself going in this crazy world. That's you leaving a mark on this world. That's you doing your part by helping yourself, by helping others in whatever fashion that you can. It doesn't have to be huge. You doing a little act of kindness could be huge for another person, but the whole world may never acknowledge you for that. But these movements make it seem as if you need to be famous, you need to be, have a few million uh, followers and subscribers on social media. You need to be known and get a whole bunch of awards. And that's just not the case. And that ends up making people feel useless. Like, oh, you see all these um, 20 under 20, you know, those types of things, all these people doing amazing things and they're under 20 years old. You see all these people with how many subscribers and followers on social media making loads of money, getting famous overnight because they're pretty white girls, you know, stuff like that, or they're hot white guys. It is what it is. And you may never be that person. And you just need to be at peace with that, that you may never be that person. You may not even want to be that person, but the world is constantly telling you, no, you should be famous. You should do this. You should do that. Well, don't listen to what the world has to say. Live your life the way you want to live your life. We're not all going to be famous. Most of the people on this planet aren't famous. And yet we feel as if there's a certain level that we need to attain. There's this certain, we just got to reach for that thing, you know, in order to feel like we're worth something. A lot of young people are feeling this nowadays that we're behind in life. We don't have a whole bunch of money. We don't have their own, we are our own home. We're still living with our parents. We're at a part-time job working at McDonald's and there's nothing wrong with that. But the world is constantly telling us that you're a low life, good for nothing. And you're, and you're not worth anything because this is all you're doing with your life. But whatever you're doing, as I said, as long as you believe that you are doing your part in this world to make this world a better place in whatever fashion, even for yourself, let's not be completely selfish, let's try and help out others too, as, lo- as much as we can, then you've left your mark. You've done your job. You're famous in my eyes. Be famous in your own eyes. Don't even worry about being famous. Just do your thing. I just feel like that movement is really making people feel, at least me personally, like because I haven't attained these things, because I, I only have this many followers and because I, I work at a part, I work at whatever and I only make this much a year and I, I can barely get by sometimes and I've dropped out of university twice that I am useless and worthless. But that is just not the case at all. Leave a mark on the world in whatever way you desire. Yes, you deserve good things, but you won't always get good things. Be at peace with what you can't control and just figure out how you personally can enjoy the journey of life. Follow your passion if you can, but if you can't, I pray one day that you can, but it's not the end of the world if you can't either. It'd be nice if you could, but there's a lot of things that it would be nice if this and this and that and that. But we live in a crazy world, so sometimes we got to choose to be okay with what we've got in the meantime and work towards better things, and hopefully we get there. And if we don't, that's life. Sometimes we don't get to where we want to be in life, at least when we want it. But if we are working hard, I believe we'll get there. I believe I'll get to where I want to be in life by continuing to work as hard as I am. I am a very hard worker. I am a very determined, diligent person. Um, I'm very forgetful though and naive, but I try my best. 
And so I believe that with this hard work that I'm putting into my YouTube channel and with school and with my mental health and with work, that I will get to where I want to be. Anyways, I know I was kind of all over the place. Forgive me for that. I am scatterbrained at times, but um, I hope I got my point across. And I didn't even really talk about the pros of everything, but I feel like if I keep going on, this is going to be longer, really long, and I'm sure it's already very long. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Feel my love for you in your heart. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Namaste. <laughs>